Aaron Heinzelman here with D2Football.com, and we're talking about the uh, Pitt State Northwest Missouri State rivalry, and uh, who better to do so than head football coach at Pitt State University, Tim Beck. Uh, coach, thank you for joining me today. No problem. Now, uh, as I said, you're a, a good guy to talk to in this rivalry, as you've been at uh, Pitt State uh, since the, the mid-'80s as a player, and your first year as a uh, full-time assistant is the – the, the year that Pitt State joined the MIAA, 1989, and they, uh, it didn't really take long for this rivalry to get going, did it? That, that year you guys played twice, you beat Northwest Missouri State twice. They had kind of a uh, out-of-nowhere year where they, they went 9-3 uh, and three overall and made the playoffs. Um, did that kind of kickstart this rivalry right, right away when you guys joined the MIAA? Or how? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not as much then. Maybe because they were, you know, obviously uh, Coach Bud Elliott was the head coach of Northwest Missouri. They were a lot different style. Uh, we were a lot different style as well. But, um, you know, we were in split back fear back then, and they were in the wishbone at then. So um, kind of a, a little bit different style of ball that's being played today. But, you know, we had a, a period of time there where we saw them in the playoffs, I believe, in 1989. Um, played them twice that year. And then, and then, um, you know, we were able to, to go on the next few years, and I don't think they made it in, you know, 90, 91, 92, uh, 93 for a while until Coach Trickman gets there and then and then really gets their program turned around. And then, uh, you know, obviously we uh, played some big games later then. So at what point do you, do you think that uh, this Northwest Missouri State, Pitt State uh, game that, you know, it's been played every year since you guys joined the league. When did it become more than just a uh, conference game for, for players and for fans? Well, I think that when you look back, um, you know, when Northwest Missouri really got things going, uh, you know, all of a sudden then it became a, a, you know, it was kind of a interesting how it got started. But the when the Fall Classic started, even though they've won most of those games, most all of those games have been really close. And uh, most of our games uh, through the years have been, you know, really hard fought, tough ball games that go down to the very end. There's been a, you know, they've blown us out a couple of times, and we've blown them out once or so. And but for the most part, everything, every, every game's have been really, really tough game. And so I think we look back to once they kind of got things turned around. And so this was the tenth year of the Fall Classic. Uh, I think you know we kind of started uh, going going at each other in that game, and then. You know, obviously we've uh, played each other, you know, a couple of times. Other than that, we played each other in 08, and we lost to them at their place 38-35. But, um, you know, we've had some unbelievable games over the years. Let's talk a minute about that fall classic. What has that done for the rivalry in terms of the the fans being able to come to such a great venue and uh, kind of meet halfway geographically? What kind of, uh, you know, how how, how good is that for this great uh, DT rivalry? Well, I think it's a great thing for Division Two, and and uh, you know people see it, uh, you know, on the billboards for for months before it happens, and in the Kansas City area, and Kansas City is an area for for all MIAA schools to recruit to, and you know I know other schools would would like to be a part of that, but it's just been a it's been a great deal for Pittsburgh State and Northwest Missouri, and it's more than just the football teams playing, you know, it's the fans and the bands and and uh, you know all the alumni and. It's just been a really neat thing to have something right there in Kansas City where there's a huge base uh, of both alumni uh, groups of both schools that, that live right in the area. Now, in terms of this rivalry, and, uh, when when you think of big college football rivalries like uh, Michigan, Ohio State, Auburn, uh, Alabama, there's uh, when, when new coaches come in, they, they kind of get the <coughs> – oh, excuse me. They have the pressure of, you know, you need to beat your your rival, uh, you know, maybe not every year, but more often than not. Is is that the kind of uh, uh, mentality that that goes on now with this kind of rivalry? I mean, you're you're coming in uh, just your second year as coach at Pitt State. Do you, do you do you have more? Do you feel more pressure to beat a team like Northwest Missouri than say other teams in the conference? Well, not necessarily. I mean, you know that you're going to have to beat Northwest Missouri. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to have a chance to win a conference championship and, you know, they're going to be right at the top and right in the thick of things at the end, you know. And so, um, you know, I, their program is so solid and their, their coach so, you know, so well. Um, they've got quality. 
quality players. You know, it's just you know it's, you're in for a battle when you have to play them. But you know, I don't I don't think there's any more pressure than any other game in the in the conference. I mean, you you have to prepare every week the same, and if you don't in this conference, you're going to get beat. And so, you know, obviously uh, Pittsburgh State and Northwest Missouri are two teams that have an outstanding uh, reputation um, with with all their alumni and with their players and fans and everything. But the, uh, you know, and we know it's going to be a great game because most of the time it's been a great game, but I, I don't know that there's any added pressure. There's pressure to win this weekend because we're in the third round of the playoffs and whichever team can win has got a, has got a great opportunity and is one of the final four teams in the, in the country. Is this the uh, premier rivalry in Division Two football? Do you believe? Well, if it's not, it's got to be one of the top ones. You know, there's no doubt about it. I think that um, you know, there's. I'm sure there's other ones that have been going on for a long time. But you know, we have in the future here. We have rivalry week, and 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 uh, you know, Pittsburgh State's the last game of the year will always be against Missouri Southern, and that's kind of our rival in Northwest Missouri's Missouri Western. Part of that's because of proximity, but that's how the the schedule has been put together. So uh, Northwest Missouri has a lot of other rivals other than Pittsburgh State, and Pittsburgh State has a lot of other rivals other than Northwest Missouri. But I still think that when Pittsburgh State and Northwest Missouri play, that there's a lot of interest with a lot of people because they know it's going to be a great football game. When you, when you guys joined the MIAA, you really, uh, I'm talk, we're talking back in 1989, uh, your first year in the MIAA, and the seven out of eight years you win conference championships, I think eight years in a row you make the Division Two playoffs. And uh, to, to start things off, uh, Coach Broyles came in in 1990 and really had Northwest Missouri's number. And again, this is kind of before the, the rivalry really took shape. But then in recent years, uh, you know, you talked about the last 10 years in Arrowhead and and even a, a few years before that, Northwest really had Pitt State's number. What 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 about Northwest Missouri made them so good and so hard to beat for all those years? Well, the big thing is Coach Churchman and his staff. You know, they put together a, a strong foundation and put together a, a great system. Um, you know, I can remember Coach Churchman coming and talking to some of us assistant coaches his first year there. Uh, come out and talking and asking questions about some of the things that we did and what our philosophy was on red shirting and you know he gathered a lot of information from a lot of different people and obviously had great ideas of his own and uh, was able to put together uh, a great system and a great program where he could continue to bring new kids in and just kind of plug them into the system and and when you get to that point where you can do that you know it, it allows you to have a great opportunity to win every Saturday. You brought me a pretty good segue here. I wanted to ask you about a lot of the the, the fans on uh, the D2 message boards. They they insist that uh, Northwest Missouri built their program in the in the shadow of or in in the in the mold of the Pitt State program. Do you think there's 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 any truth to that? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. That, like like I said, I know that I'm sure that Coach Churchma was. Uh, gathered a lot of information from a lot of different people, and I'm sure that he he looked at some of the things that Pittsburgh State did at the time, and um, you know implemented his own things. But you know there are certain things in in building a program and and getting your system put together um, that I'm sure there are some things that he probably uh, you know used that that Pittsburgh State did. But again, you know he uh, he had a great plan and a great idea on how he wanted to do things and, and carry it out and has built a tremendous foundation for their program. Yeah, he sure has. They've got quite the good the deal of uh, success recently here in the MIAA. Now, let's uh, look forward to this Saturday's game. Obviously, you said uh, a lot of pressure, a really big game. Anytime you play for a regional championship, no matter who you play, it's going to be a, a, a big game. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to beat a good team twice, they say. What what uh what's what 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 are the keys do you think to pulling out the, the victory over a, a good team that you gotta play again? Well, I don't think there's any question it's hard to beat somebody twice, but the bottom line is they still gotta come down here and beat us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that uh, for us to, to beat them, we have to you know, three things. We have to continue to play with the intensity and execution that we've been playing on defensively because our our uh, our defense has been playing really well the last several weeks and, and for the most part all season. Offensively, we can't turn the football over um, and, and, you know, continue to execute better on offense. And then we got to be smart and be sound and, and play good special teams. And if I think if we do 
those three things, and we got a great chance. What was it about the uh, this year's fall classic? Was, did you just go into halftime and uh, totally ream out the guys, or did you, it, was it all game planning in that second half? I mean, that was really the the the, the epitome of a tale of two games, and when one and one half to another. No, you know, the main thing is our coaches did a good job of, of keeping our kids in the game because a game like that can definitely get away from you. And it was in the process of being away, uh, getting away from us. But, you know, our coaches settled our players down, and we just didn't play very good at the beginning of the game. We spotted them some several points, and, and uh, you know, we came back, and then, and then we made a couple of big plays, and I'm sure they relaxed a little bit. And the next thing you know, they're in a ball game, and then we were able to have the opportunity to, to get the ball at the end of the game and drive it down and kick a field goal so you know we had a lot of things working in our favor and them you know jumping ahead as fast as they did and and uh then it's again it's something you coach and preach to your kids but it's hard sometimes not to relax when you're as head as much as they were and so you know we had a lot like i said we had a lot of things working in our favor but again you have to give our kids a lot of credit because they absolutely did not quit and they uh played a tremendous second half what a great game that was. Now this uh, round two moves to the jungle and a, a rare opportunity to get this game on campus. I personally, I, I uh, my, my days in college, I uh, went to Saginaw Valley State University in their days of a big rivalry with Grand Valley. And uh, we never had the opportunity to play in a great venue like, like Arrowhead Stadium up there in Michigan, but we had some great, great games on campus. Do um, you think getting a, a, a game like this on campus once in a while uh, is, is, is a good thing for the university? Oh, no question. It's a great thing for the university. And, and uh, you know, we played at their place in 2008, and it was a great atmosphere. Um, you know, it was a game that we felt like we had a chance to win at the end, and we didn't. And, uh, you know, we, our kids played, played awesome that day. We were down again. We were able to come back and make it a game at the end. But, uh, yeah, having it on campus at either campus, you know, both schools, Northwest Missouri and Pittsburgh State, have such great following um, that, uh, you know, it's, it's really neat to, to have it back in your hometown. It sure is. Um, 